Today we visit Dodge Country with this 1971 Dodge Charger by AMT Ertl. Coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to Dodge Country, as today we get to take a look at the 1971 Dodge Charger. Now this is a really groovy model kit that's come out a few times in the past from AMT Ertl, our good friends down at AMT Ertl. Now if you love these great amazing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell down yonder so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And if you love great model kits and are looking for awesome deals on them, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca and sign up for our newsletter. Because on our newsletter, we often do flyers and the flyers have great discount codes and coupons in them so that you get to save online. And one of the great savings is any purchases over $75, you get free shipping within Canada. Anyway, without further ado, let's go down to our Dodge showroom and see what's in the box. And here we go all the way down to our 1971 showroom for Dodge, where we get to check out the Dodge Charger. And you know what, folks? I think this kit actually belongs to my wife. But anyway, this one came out in the year 2000 from the AMT Ertl Company when they were competing with Tamiya and Ravel and all the rest. This is another beautiful kit from our old friends. So if we just flip this thing up on its side, you can see some great engine and interior and build-ups here going on. Nice uh, green color that they got on there, which of course is pretty close to the real Chrysler color. There is the skill level, this is skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up. You need glue and paint to make it all happen. There's over 100 parts in here, which we're going to hear crash all over the place. Now the end of the box got faded. <laughs> Now let's do it. <laughs> Slide line or something. And now we go all the way back to our nineteen seventy one. And now we go all the way back to 1971 to visit our Dodge showroom, where we have our Dodge Charger all ready to go. And I do believe this model kit actually belongs to my wife, now that I opened it up and took a quick look before I started rolling film. <laughs> anyway, this model kit came out in the year 2000 from the Ertl Company. It's a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint. And it does have 100 plus parts, which you're going to hear all falling down when I tilt this thing up. Are you ready? All right, here we go. So on the side of the box here, we have this nice build-up model, which you can see here. And there's, it's got the Magnum motor sitting in there. I do, do believe it's a 440 Magnum. And then there's our interior, as well as this nice body all built up and painted. I do believe the color is Sublime Lime. I might be mistaken there. I'm going off memory. Let me know in the comments down below if I got that right. Now, as I tip up the 100 plus parts here, you can see the end of the box looks like the front. This one is faded. This model kit we had to rescue from the High River Flood. And it sat upstairs in front of the window for a while, faded out that end, but still. Then on this side of the box we have again this nice photograph of the real model kit. Looks great. And then you can see the color at the end of this end. Alright, so there's our model. Now let's just take the lid off here, move it out of the way, move on down the road. Okay, and there's our instruction sheet. I do believe, oh, maybe not. The decals are in there somewhere, maybe, or in the box. We'll find out. There's the body. Yeah, there was some work done on it. You can feel the seam lines were sanded down. Here we got our first parts tree with a bunch of suspension and hoses on it. 
there's our subframe members, or our front K member actually, for our suspension. There's our subframe there. A lot of little hoses on here. More hoses and drive shafts. Uh, under hood details. There's our glass in the bag. And our chrome. There's battery in here too. <laughs> okay, and then all the inner door fender or panel components. Yep, she was working on this. Our backup lights. But as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of cool things in here. Rear springs. Very nice seats. The uh, under frame here. There's the decals down at the bottom. Plus a little cover. It's supposed to cover those. <laughs> and then the wheels, dashboard, engine, all kinds of good details. So what I think I'll do is I'll just clear all this out of the way and then we'll spread out the parts and have a look at them. But before we look at those parts, here's our instruction sheet for our 71 Charger RT. Which is interesting, it doesn't say RT on the box top. However, here we are now. Shows the engine, the 440 CID Magnum V8, so I was right. Transmission, suspension, all the rest. Very cool little write-up. So I'll just zoom this back a bit because the instructions are pretty big. There's the old before you begin. Read all this, phone this number if you have troubles. And they do give you some re recommended paint colors here. Not too much. We do get the full interior paint chart there, which is nice. Okay, let's just bring this in a little bit and we'll look at things panel by panel. Our first panel here shows the Magnum 440 going together. And you can see the nice work that was put into this engine. You got the right and left hand engine block plus transmission, which looks like an automatic transmission on here, actually. There's our cylinder head covers with all the valves at the top, the rocker arms. There's our front cover, our oil pan, our transmission pan. And then if we just move this down a little bit, there's our fan with the clutch on there going into, wow, look at all these pulleys. Woo, it's almost like a modern car there. There's our alternator going on and then our air conditioner and power steering. So this is a fully optioned car. And then as we go down here a bit, there's our air cleaner with the Magnum 440 decal, which will be on our decal sheet. The coil, the carburetor, intake manifold wait what is this top and bottom carburetor so it's quite quite a big machine here there's our intake manifold our right valve cover and our left valve cover let's just move this a little more there's a distributor and our exhaust manifolds going on as well as our starter and our oil filter and then this is a heat riser with a tube which goes up into there and sits on top of the exhaust manifold on the left then there's our big pulley assembly going into the front. So as you can tell, this is quite the detailed engine. Next up, we have this nice little paint code going on here. This is a 71 Charger color availability based on Dodge OEM specifications. So we have uh, all the colors, light gunmetal blue, light blue metallic, bright blue metallic, all the stuff. And then here they've got a little dot saying body color bumpers were an option. So on the bright blue metallic, on the gold metallic, on the what do we got? Green go, hemi orange and citron yellow. Oh, so I guess green go is the color on the box. All right, so I made a little mistake. Sublime lime. I know that was a color. Maybe that was AMC. Anyway, uh, there is in the interior colors. So blue, green, tan, black, white, gold. So it'll say optional available carpet instrument panel steering column steering wheel and package shelf on the white one were black orange or black on the orange and black on the gunmetal type of interiors so quite a valuable little chart to have and here we get into the chassis assembly we've got our front sway bar going onto our lower k frame we've got the little spindles underneath so be careful with those so you don't lose them there's our upper K frame sitting on there. And then our engine glues all the way in this, as well as our lower radiator hose, the radiator wall, and our radiator. And then if we move this up a little bit, 
or down a little, however you're going. <laughs> you got mufflers here, four pieces, and our subframe will pop onto our chassis floor pan right here. And then it says to paint the gas tank aluminum. Then to continue our chassis assembly, we have the shock mount sitting here. Oh, so that's what those were. Uh, the leaf springs are differential with the cover going on, our drive shaft and our two rear shock absorbers all going in for our rear suspension. Figure 3 shows our interior assembly with our dashboard, our steering column, and here we have uh, two types of steering columns. Interesting. Here we have our interior assembly for step number three with our dashboard, two sectional steering column, as well as our steering wheel up here. And then we have our front seats with the seat backs gluing on. And here's the beauty of this type of kit. You've got your interior, it's not a bucket, it's two separate panels, which are really groovy. And then there's our rear seat all going together here for our interior. Now to carry on with our body chassis assembly, we have our firewall gluing into the body, the rear view mirror going up inside, our windshield and rear window, as well as side glass going in there, and then our rear bumper and our colored taillights all go together to finish up our body. Next up we have our wheels going together, so we've got our plated wheel, looks like it's going into some good years, and then our wheel retainer in the back, as well as our wheel backs. Then you're able to put on all four of your tires and wheels. There are some front shock absorbers which are going in here up into our fender wells as well as our steering shaft which slips in underneath. And then once this is all hooked together you've got your Dodge almost finished. Panel 5 is our final assembly and here's all these hoses and everything which are your air compressor hoses as well as your heater hoses. So again a fully loaded charger. There's the radiator hose, the wiper motor for your windshields, your power booster and master cylinder, and the battery all dropping in place. Coming out to the back here, we've got our rear valance going on, which of course you want to paint that body color. And then our rear wing and the little mounts for our wing, the pedestals. There's our license plate all going together as well. As for the front of the car, we have our hood with our little vents going in there and another decal for our black stripes. There's our mirror going on the side, the front valence panel and front, yeah, valence panel and an air dam underneath. And then we've got the nice chrome grill with the quad headlights going in, as well as our turn signals going on that valence piece. And then here is where our black decals go. So these ones go on the body sides, which hook up with the one on the hood. And that will complete our look at our 1971 Dodge Charger RT instruction sheet. Here's our Dodge Charger body for 71 and chicka boom chicka boom don't you just love it? <laughs> anyway that'll get you guys singing. <laughs> okay as you can see there's some nice crisp body detail in here the little side vents and the Charger logo as well as our turn signal lamps underneath. Very cool for 71. Look at that detail on the hood hinge lock there. Really cool stuff. Can of course see some mold marks underneath which will need to be taken care of. However under here you also get your sun visors, the nice roof, seat belts in the roof just like my 71 Cutlass Oldsmobile. 72 actually. There's a dome light there. So again very nicely detailed up underneath. On the back, not too much, because remember the taillights are going all the way across that expanse. Um, now there was some seam lines coming down here, but my wife removed them. in the holes in the trunk lid as well for those pylons for the spoiler. So again, very nice. There's the uh, vents underneath. And for 71, now the hood is coming all the way up to the front of the glass. And speaking of the hood, there it is. You can see the nice fit and finish in there no gaps. Again the vents just move the body out, uh, out of the way. Look at underneath, look at all that detail there. It's really nice but again some old marks so a number 16 hobby blade will be able to scrape those off very nicely. Again really cool looking body for this kit and really well proportioned and designed. 
Next up we have the chassis, and this of course is a unibody car, so you do have some frame runners here, or frame rails, and then it all goes into the rocker panels here, and then there's going to be the little subframe, which we'll take a look at later, which will glue up into those holes and go to the front of the car. Now of course here you can see all the nice detail, the brake lines, and the fuel lines, and everything else that's underneath. Again, just a work of art. There's little tabs to lock it all into place in the body and interior. And then if we flip it over you can see the nice carpet detail molded in here for our interior passenger compartment. Again, very nicely done. Just a few mold marks in there, but overall very excellent. Next up we have the interior components and my wife did uh, cut these all apart and clean them up. She also glued the seat backs on the front uh, bench seat here, but we won't worry about that. Actually, I guess they're, they're twin buckets with a console. Anyway, you can see the great detail in here. The nice part about molding things separately is that they can put in details like these door window winders for the glass, which look like the real thing. Uh, there's our dashboard with the pedals molded in place, and yes, it is an automatic car. There's a big extra wide brake there. The nice steering wheel, very much like the wheel I think I had my 70, uh, 76 Plymouth. Same with the console here. It's got the little indicator for your uh, shifting for your um, automatic. And then again, look at the nice detail on all of this. So I'll bring this up into the camera here. Okay, so there's our dashboard and you can see the nice gauges and the vents everything that goes in there i think a little i think this might have been wood grain in there and along here if you guys owned one of these real cars back in the past let us know otherwise i'm going to be doing a google search <laughs> okay anyway yeah let's just move this out of the way There's our door panels, and as you can see, there are some very nice textures in there, as well as our handles. There's a little slot for the side of our dashboard, which has the little pin there, just so that these can line up. And that will give you the look of the real Dodge in there. And looking at the seats, you can see all the nice upholstery detail inside of there. And the typical backs on these seats. Very awesome work. Underneath there's some ribbing, of course, for strength in plastic, which is always nice. Same with the rear seats here. We've got that nice detail. Little package shelf up in there. And again, ribbed underneath, just for extra strength. Oops. And then our steering wheel, looking all nice, with little hand grips in the back. Your camera's having trouble focusing on, but that's okay. So there's our car all ready to go with, of course, our side panels and dashboard, steering wheel, and column. So next up we have our engine block and the components. And my wife did build this quite a bit. I guess getting it ready for the Chrysler paint color in there. Uh, there's our engine block and everything. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Our little uh, fuel filter there. This is the... goes underneath the exhaust here. <laughs> and here we have our engine assembly, which my wife has put together, waiting for the paint for our Chrysler color. There's our oil filter there as well as this is for the exhaust manifold and hooks up underneath our air cleaner here. There's our fan with the clutch going into these pulleys. Air compressor motor. There's our starter motor. There is a power steering pump on here, but I can't find it in the box. There's our exhaust manifolds, as well as our two-piece carburetor. So I'm going to move these little pieces out of the way. We'll just take a look at the engine. And as you can see, it is a nice thing. See that excellent looking oil pan under there, just like the real Chrysler, as well as our automatic transmission cover. Everything looks really nice, goes together quite well, so you do get a little bit of a preview on how good this engine is. 
There's our frost plugs in there. This little line goes uh, underneath the starter motor. So again, very nicely detailed. And I guess my wife has shown us how it goes together. So, whoops, <laughs> there we go. And here we have the rest of our gray components, as you can see from what I could piece together. I do think there are some missing components in my wife's kit, because I can't seem to find the exhaust pipes with the mufflers on them. However, here we have the uh, rear panel, the front valance, valence, whatever, and there, there's our wind deflector there, as well as the top of our rear spoiler, our radiator wall with the radiator on it, our hoses, firewall, the windshield washer motor, the brake booster and master cylinder, or vice versa. There's another one of those little air conditioner hoses, the front K member, the rear exhaust, the radiator hose upper and lowers, drive shaft, uh, steering column, or linkage, whatever, <laughs> the lower K members with the torsion bar suspension on them, little pylons for our spoiler as well as those shocks, tops of the shocks. And then there's the front spindles, rear springs, front crossover, uh, shock absorbers front, and the taller ones are in the back. So overall, nicely done. You can take a look at a few of these components, like the K member here. Hang on, let's just move this all out of the way. Whee! <laughs> take a look at that firewall. Again, you can see it's got all the right wires on there and looks very nice. A lot of little holes for mounting things onto. So again, highly detailed, across the back, maybe a couple little mold marks, nothing too severe. There's our radiator wall and radiator. Again, nice detail on these kits. Very excellently done. K-frame lower. Let's find that upper here. There's the upper. You can see that it will line up perfectly and look correct. Again, nice detail work under there. Same as on here. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Excellent work from AMT. So again, there's all our components as best as I can arrange them. And I know you will find this to be very nice to put together yourself. Next up, we get to my favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome parts tree. But unfortunately, there isn't very much chrome on this part tree. There is the front and rear grills, of course, bumpers and whatnot. And then we've got two mirrors here. And of course, the four wheels, which are not on this parts tree right now. However, this is all our chrome for the kit. So stuff like window frames and whatever, you'll need bare metal foil on that one, which I do have at Monster Hobbies. <laughs> the back has a lot of ribs in there. There are a lot of mold marks on there as well. Smooth it all down. Then paint this flat black in the back so you don't see it from up underneath the car. But overall, I mean, look at that nice detail in there. Very excellent, very true to the real car. Next up, we have our glass components. And as you can see, we get one nice big long clear red tail light in here and then we've got our windshield and our rear glass as well as the side windows the four little headlights for our quad uh, front grille as well as these little lights in here light covers in here uh, now remember with these they've got that little grill pattern on them you want them to be like vertical and horizontal not at 45 degree angles or 33.47 degree <laughs> angles. Anyway, again, lots of nice detail on there. And the glass is nice and crisp in that little plastic bag. And now here's the lowdown on our wheel and tire combination. As you can see, we've got some groovy factory steel wheels going in here. You want to paint inside all these little divots with flat black. And then I do believe that center lower is aluminum. Again, very nicely done. We've got these Goodyear tires, which are very reminiscent of the Johan style tire. 
very light on the Goodyear script on there. And again, some very nice tread pattern in here. Very solid. Reminds me of Johan tires. I guess would be the correct, correct thing to say. And then we have these retainers sitting in here and the wheel backs, which my wife has painted flat black. Just bringing one of these up, you can see the nice detail in there. It looks like a brake drum back. So again, very excellent work here by that original AMT Ertl crew from 2000. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet. I do believe this one got damp, though, because it kind of looks weird. I don't know if they're going to water slide off here. But there's our RT stripe for the hood. The black stripes going along the side and on the cowl, as well as a little curvature there. Magnum 440 decal. These are Indiana license plates, LRM5247. And then we've got our scripts here for our hood and side of the car. So unfortunately, there's only the black stripes. If you wanted white or something else, you're out of luck. But overall, very nicely done. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1971 Dodge Charger. A very groovy model kit. And if you've built this in the past, how did you like it? How well did it go together for you? Let us see your your pictures of the model over on our Facebook page and let us know how you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great tour down to Dodge Country and you get to check out the cool songs on the radio for 1971 as well. <laughs> anyway, hope you had a groovy time and if you love these great videos and you want to see more, remember to like, subscribe and share this video with all your friends and family pound down yonder on the notification bell so that every time I make a new video you're the first one to see it. And this kit is not for sale, it's out of my own collection, but if you want to see all our great model car kits don't forget to check it out at www.monster-hobbies.ca Sign up for that newsletter for great deals and flyers and until next time everybody happy driving!